Bang! Knees and Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy, and I got some smudge on my blade. This is going to be a sharpening video of the Warncliffe PM2. I'm not showing you the blade because I already did the video, and I'm, I'm filming this later. Anyways, but I did ruin... The factory edge, I can guarantee you that. I ruined the factory edge. You're going to have to watch the video if you want to see. And there is a review coming soon. Did I say video or review? Anyways, there is a review coming soon on this knife. Um, after I carried a little bit more, I've been carrying it to work. And yeah, but after I test it out a little bit more, we'll see if there's any benefits to it. Or if you just might as well get the, the regular PM2. So we'll check that out. I love you guys. Get to the video. Peace. All right, guys, I'm trying out my new, I have a new clamp to hold my phone, my camera. And we're going to test it out. So, I'm sharpening this worn cliff. I'm going to find my angle. As long as I'm close, I'm happy. I'm not uh, too concerned about it being exact. I just want to make sure that I can repeat the angle that I start with. That's the most important thing. And I'm going to pick a place on the spine of the knife where I'm gonna hold my finger because this is going to go straight back and forth because the blade or the edge is nice and flat or nice and straight. I'm, I don't want to change that. I wanna make sure that I keep and hold it nice and flat even when I drag off the stone like this I want to make sure it still stays nice and flat Take a look at it. She's looking pretty decent. This is the factory edge. And then here is our edge. I have been using it. So it's almost ready to to get a new edge so i'm kind of doing it a little early i could probably use it a little bit longer by stropping and honing and stuff i could definitely hone it back and then strop it but the owner asked me to put an edge on it anyway so i might as well do it is the one area that's not getting hit and a little tiny bit in the heel but we will definitely get that did hit it a little bit. I'm going to move you guys so you get a different angle.
I'm mostly using my body to rock back and forth rather than just my arms right there. I think that's pretty good. We still have a bunch of stones to go through, so... that bird. Trying not to block the camera. The biggest thing with this is just keeping it level or keeping it flat regardless if you come off the stone and you're getting the tip or whatever. That's the most important part is keeping it nice and flat. If I'm going straight, if I'm going to the side, if I'm going at an angle, regardless just keep it flat and keep looking at your edge to see where you're hitting it. There's a spot you're not hitting, then go to that spot, but keep it flat. Meaning like right now, if I'm not getting the tip, well then I might drag it off the stone and get to the tip, but I gotta keep it level. And eventually it will hit. If it's not hitting right away, that's okay because the, the stone is so flat that most likely you're going to make that the, the edge flatter than it was, or straighter, I should say. So it might seem like it's not hitting in certain areas, but that's just because that area isn't as flat as your stone. And I am going to figure out another way to hold this. It's like a tri it's like an arm that the uh, the tripod the camera's on right now. It's like an arm that you can bend. I'm gonna have to figure out another way to clamp it so that you guys aren't moving and rocking with the desk that I have you clamped to. You almost want to think about it like a level. You're always trying to keep the level as you're going across it. You're always trying to keep it level all the way. And then like I said, places that don't look like it's getting hit, just keep working at it because most likely, you know, theirs was done on a belt grinder, you know, or with a belt. So it might not be as flat as the stone you're using. So just keep working at it until it is as flat as the stone you're using. Now we're going to uh, 100 slash 80 micron. The last stone was 160 slash 125.
And remember, I do offer a sharpening service for anybody that needs knives sharpened. Just contact me. My, my information is down in the description at the bottom. And if you ever have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. And the patrons know that if they ever need a video personally made for them, I have no problem doing that. Whatever I can do to help. It's looking pretty good, but I'm just going to go just a little bit flatter. The last stone should go way faster than that first one. You know, the first one was kind of reprofiling it and making it nice and flat. So it takes a little bit longer than the next stones, but I did leave a little bit to, to finish on the next stones. That's looking pretty good. Nice and flat, nice and straight. Same thickness all the way down. The grip pattern looks nice and even. Basically want to make it to where when you do run the, the, the blade flat across the stone that it hits the entire edge for the most part. The stone's kind of moving because it's wet. The rubber feet. Oh yeah, she's looking good. I technically have a burr all the way up and down. I'm just gonna work at it just a little bit more just because. Now I didn't change the angle much. They already had a pretty good angle on it. I basically just matched the angle that they had on the stump, on the blade. I'm just going to make it a little bit better, a little bit more consistent, and possibly a little finer. We'll see. I'm not sure what grit we're going to go to yet, but we will see. We'll see how the S30V does. Next stone is 50 slash 40 micron. that I'm blocking you guys from seeing. That's looking really good though. And I kind of try to put pressure wherever's hitting on the stone. So if it's the heel, I'm putting just a little bit of pressure. And as I come off the stone, I'm trying to keep it level and put just pressure, you know, wherever the stone's hitting the blade. A little bit more. This is the last stone, basically. Like, the next one's not a polishing stone, but it's, like, the step to going to polish so anything that this stone doesn't get out all the rest of the stones will be harder or you'll have to spend a lot more time on so with this stone you want to make sure it's almost a 600 grit stone right here but you want to make sure everything is done nice and flat 
I'm gonna see that way. Not really. I'll block it. Let me go this way. I got a couple other sharpening videos coming up. One's going to be how I do my convex edges. And another one, someone asked me to do a sharpening video on the WorkSharp Precision Guided Sharpener doing a Tonto. I think it, uh, specifically a large Tonto. So I got one just in mind. Just because he says he's having trouble with it, and I'm going to see what the trouble is. This is basically helping me get really close to the heel of the blade. And we'll kind of run off there for a second. Yeah, we do that. Sometimes you feel like you're uh, messing up or backtracking or you're having issues. It's kind of like molding or like, you know, playing with clay. <clears throat> Sometimes it looks really ugly right before it looks beautiful, you know. And sometimes you're, you know, you want to stay patient because a lot of times, even though it might look like you're having issues or something's going wrong, it might be the process that needs to happen to make it perfect. And you just need to relax, keep looking at it, keep working at it, keep molding it until it's perfect. Let me see if I can't. You can also hold your fingers in front right here and hold it and kind of do the same thing I'm doing behind it. It's just, or even just right here at the tip, you know. And all I'm doing with my finger is making sure it stays in the same place and that it's not rocking back and forth like this. So when I come back like this, I can feel it's the same amount of pressure on my finger which is hardly any, and that it lines right back up the same way every time I come back onto the stone with my finger, because my finger does come off the stone, but I'm making sure it's nice and level. One day I'll do a video about riding the edge, meaning riding the edge of the stone. Because that is a technique that is a must in freehand sharpening. You must know how to do that. And you see the steel building up on the edge.
right. All the spots that aren't perfect, still just working it out until it's perfect. We're gonna dress the stone just a little bit. Feels better. Oh, yeah, she's looking really good. A little bit at the heel. A lot of people ask me how much pressure I'm putting. Enough to cut the steel. So I am putting pressure. Not a lot though. Because I don't, you know, more pressure I add, the harder it's going to be to hold my angle. So as much pressure as I can put and hold this angle without it rocking and also without me getting tired and... You know, start laying the edge back because I'm putting too much pressure. So, just a couple pounds of pressure, enough to to drag it across like I'm like slicing a layer off. Think about like slicing um, the you know like the top of something off, um, cheese or something. And don't be afraid to switch fingers from one finger to another and then also maybe move this finger down here. If you need a little pressure down there, just make sure it stays exactly where you put it. Make sure it's nice and even with what you were already doing. Don't let it change the angle. You can feel it with your hand that you're holding the knife with and the finger that's on the spine of the blade. I got the arm of this camera in the way from me going all the way across this stone. I shouldn't have too much of an issue doing it with this little half a stone. All right, now we are going to seven slash five micron. The last one we did was 20 slash 14 micron. So now we're going to, this is a polishing stone. Sorry if the camera's bouncing a little bit. Like I said, this is the first time I'm using this tripod. Forgive me, I will set up something better next time. Let's get to it. Of 
when you go to a polishing stone, every movement counts. So you want to make sure you are on point with your angle. You can really start feeling it, uh, how flat it is and everything on the stone after a bit. Oh, come on, I know my hands are a mess. so I can reach it. Okay, last stone, let's get it. I'm gonna dress the stone just a little bit. Basically just scratching all the steel off the surface and uncovering the diamonds because this stone isn't hard enough to cut diamond. I mean, it'll, it can, but it'd take a long time. But what it will do is it'll expose the diamonds and cut everything else around the diamonds to expose them out of the surface. Because they're very tiny. This is 3 slash 2 micron. It's going good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's going good, all right. She's dirty, but we'll get her cleaned up here in a second. Feels very, very sharp even before it's finished. I 
at this point I can feel when it's on the angle. When it's off, it's not as slick. It's more rough. So when I'm, when I'm holding the angle, I can feel how smooth it is. It almost like wants the suction cup to the surface as well because it's so flat, two flat surfaces with moisture in between. All right, there's really no need to strop or, you know, to, to knock a burr off or anything like that. So I'm just going to wash it, clean it up. Whew. Wow, that thing is scary sharp. So let's get it cleaned up and then we'll test it on some paper. First off, here it is on some paper towel, just really quick. Hoo, 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 hoo. Hopefully you guys seen that. Very, very sharp. Let's get it on some paper. All right, let's take a close look at the edge. It still has a little bit of grit. I could have spent more time on the stone to uh, to make it like ooh to make it so mirror that uh there's no grip pattern in there but it's so sharp i don't want to do it i mean it's incredibly sharp very sticky so i don't want to take that grip pattern out when this thing is just insanely sharp I mean, this thing will dance to paper. This thing's crazy sharp. Did you guys see that? I don't know if you guys seen that, but I just cut a sliver off. So small they don't even they just fall off. I mean, it's crazy. Love it. We'll do one slow pass because some people ask me for that. Just so you can see the tip right there. Now let's zoom in and take some close-ups of the edge. I might need to clean it just a little bit more. Very, very nice. I'm very impressed. That's why I like S30V more than S35VN. Because if that was S35VN, I would have had to have stopped at 20 slash 14 micron to have it this sharp. Um, if, if you want a mirror edge. And I'm not saying that a mirror edge is better or anything like that. Because I personally like a toothy edge the best. But sometimes it is nice to have a beautiful mirror edge. And it, it doesn't make it possible when you can't, when it just gets duller, you know, when you get to that level. With S30V, you can get that. So, there you guys go. I love you guys. Peace.